I became a doctor, I think a long time ago when I was a little kid. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be able to help people and do things. My name is Chris Elsner, I'm a pediatrician. I've been in Santa Barbara for a long time. Uh, I had worked at the Children's Medical Clinic for many years. I had reached a point in doing pediatrics where uh, I had been practicing for 25 years or so and enjoyed every minute of it. But there were certain aspects of it that I wanted to be able to delve into and to, to learn about, both for myself uh, and for my family and for everybody around me and those in Santa Barbara. Uh, and that led me to want to be able to do some international health. I first heard about Doctors Without Borders a long time ago. It's an organization that's been around for decades. To my mind, they've always been the premier organization to be able to go in places in need in the world, all over the world, to be able to bring medical care to those in dire need. In my case, it turned out that they wanted some help in South Sudan taking care of kids. And they asked me if I could do that, and I said, yeah. South Sudan is a country that has undergone strife and insurrection for generations, making it difficult for the average South Sudanese person to make it. I worked in a hospital in a town called Awil, a town of about 80,000 people. We saw children with all kinds of difficulties, uh, all the way from physical things, uh, kids falling out of trees and having broken femurs, uh, kids falling into fires uh, and being severely burned, uh, children who would fall into pits that had been dug out of the ground with a lot of water in them from rainwater, uh, and children would even drown or near drown in these. Uh, we also saw a lot of infectious uh, illness and when I was there the weather was really the rainy season which created a lot of mosquitoes which created a lot of malaria and malaria is not an illness that you want to have. Uh, as an American and as a Caucasian in a very non-Caucasian place was that we were treated with great respect. Uh, the, we were called Kwaja. Uh, by the locals there and little kids would come running around and laughing and playing with us calling us kwaja which was actually a very very nice term it just meant that we had lighter colored skin um, so there was no derogatory thing about it at all one of the things that I really learned uh, about being in South Sudan is that people are people no matter what culture they are their culture was very, very different than ours. And of course, I look through my culture, or look through the world through my culture, and I have a viewpoint. Theirs is totally different, oftentimes in how we would treat their children. Sometimes we were at odds in terms of how, what to do for the kids. Uh, we would have children who were very, very ill, extremely ill, who might need blood transfusions, and yet the parents didn't understand blood transfusions and wouldn't do them. And so it was up to us to be able to, to do that. Otherwise, the stakes were high. The child might not live. Coming back to the United States, totally different. I went to a, you know, a big Costco, uh, and uh, in one aisle of Costco would feed an entire village for a month. There are wonderful, wonderful people that are there that I know that just are not going to be able to have what we have at this point. And there are brothers and sisters in some way, shape, or form. I found that if we unpacked our cultures and looked at the humanness underneath all of that, which is love and caring and survival. That was the basis of being able to truly, I think, be able to hook in with people and to be able to help take care of the kids and to build things from there. That's what I really learned. That's what I really learned.